It's KGB. It's KGB. Live show. We gon' set it right. Live show. We only tell the truth. Live show. We gon' set it right. Live show. The truth straight way. Straight from the scripture. Straight way. To you straight, no chaser. The truth straight way. Straight from the scripture. Straight way. To you straight, no chaser. The truth straight way. Alright, welcome to the KGB Live Show with your host, Brother Kabir Baja Biamelo! Yeah, hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just the camera here, one second, on your team. Too far left. Alright. This way? Yeah. No, this way. Without, I mean, without blocking you, I just kind of push you. Alright, just like this? There you go. Alright, All right. there we go. Hallelujah. Well, let's do a quick uh, sound check, everyone, everybody who's present. Give us an eight for great and a zero for uh, bad quality here. How are we looking on video? How are we looking on sound? Brother Kabir, you want to test your mic? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you see that thing to me, too, as well? What? The uh, show. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Brother Jordan, well, you want to test your mic real quick? I got it. Testing one, two, three. I got Jerry. it. Shalom. Near me. Say it louder for the people in the back, bro. Can you guys hear Jordan? Near me. Shalom. How about the, the studio eyes? Can you guys give a, a quick woohoo? Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah! All right. Okay, <laughs> what is going on here? Come on. You don't see it? I see it. Okay. Oh, you got it now? Yeah, I got it. it yeah, yeah, yeah. I just found it. It, just okay. was, it was there. All right, since so we're back for another show, this is episode 51. One. Five, one. You Man. Believe, brother, we, we passed the, the 50 mark. 50 that's more. Like, that's, like, that's, that's, like, that's like a golden 50. wedding. I don't, don't even, I don't even know. I but 50, know. that's uh, yeah, that's halfway. I mean, I guess we, we I guess we could go to I mean, we're, shoot for 100 in it, right? I mean, I mean if we're it took us two. It, it, how long have year. we been doing that's this stuff? Year. That's a year 50, span. Once a, a week, week yeah. Two weeks almost. But then we don't do every, you know, with the right, with the feast and everything. So next week we can do a one year anniversary. And then another thing too, um, got to 7,000 subscribers. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, 7,000. Praise yeah. God. Praise yeah. God. That's, that's, that's a good number. That's seven. not bad for being shadow banned. Yeah, you shadow banned. Yeah, I mean, it was there, it was there for a long time. I they know. Listen, man, we got to stop this guy. So yeah. You were just saying too much truth with the court stuff that was happening. I mean, just. It was too much. They, they, they probably put a court order on uh, YouTube on me, too. And then the COVID stuff happened, so everything kind of got automated. There was the the yeah. human element was uh, removed. But anyway, uh, we're back. You see the title of the show, Sharper Than Any two. Double-Edged Sword. Or two-edged sword. For Is it two or double? You put double? I put double. Just okay, it doesn't. Okay. Modern, but you get the value. It's, it's a sword, and it's sharp. Sharper than a sharp any, than sharper than a sword. Any, but you have a, but any double-edged sword. Was the samurai swords, were they two-edged? Really? They're one side, huh? Shalom. All the saints. Well, saints. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're back for another show. Hopefully, you guys stick around for the whole show. Yep. Uh, I'm sure you're going to go He's making in. fun of me by going too long. Right, guys, yeah. I'm a, Hey, I'm, you know I'm not gonna say gotta nothing. Be led by spirit. And you just gotta go with the spirit. That's it. Yes. But that's anyway, it. Brother Kabir, how are you doing today? I am. Um, I am doing well. I am very. I'm doing well. I'm restful. Um, got a good workout. We, you know, we, oh, yeah. we're moving up on our weights and everything consistently. Yep. I haven't missed. I mean, how long have we been working out? Almost eight weeks now, yeah, consistently yeah, this for is me. So doing well. Community is, uh, you know, gelling. You know, we got, uh, you know, some new. Uh, we had a new brother. When did you get here, Isaiah, brother Isaiah? Uh, a month ago. Yeah, so I think I think it's safe to say we broke him in a little bit. Would you say we broke him in? I mean, that that, that takes a lot of hard work, you know, to break people in. Um, you know, sharpening each other. Um, you know, the chemistry is. You know, every time when you're on a football team, the most important thing is team chemistry. And uh, so when new people come in, they can mess up that chemistry. And so it's good when you do things together. You know, you uh, sweat together, work together, eat together, sleep. Well, you know, we, I mean, but, you know, just do everything to worship together, sing together. Right. I mean, so um, I believe that. I mean, what would you say? I mean, would you say that it's a good chem? I mean, the chemistry. Oh, definitely. Even- I think I, in general for everybody here in this community, we've all been growing together. We've been through a lot together. But mm-hmm. we went through some hard times together with the court mm-hmm. stuff. We've uh, just we just been going through a lot together, yeah. you know, growing together. I mean, we got things that you talked about, future plans are coming up that we're going to be in D 
doing that together it might be a little mm-hmm. bit of a struggle and you know who knows where we're going to be uh five years from now mm-hmm. but either way we're all united and we're all mm-hmm. going it uh together so and the one yeah. thing uh you know i just want to give the praise to the most high yah yah is good i mean he oh, is okay. just good I mean, I, I tell you, man, I mean, this is going on literally three years now that yeah. I've been with Straightway Truth Ministry. You see that back there, right there, with Straightway Truth Ministry. And all I can tell you is that I am thankful. I am so, so humbled and thankful that Yah was so gracious to open up my eyes. Uh, being a man of wealth, being a man of uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, famous, he could have just left me behind, right? I mean, doesn't the word say that it's easier for a camel to go into the eye of a needle. But for a rich man, it's, uh, what he says, easier for a camel than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so I'm, I'm humbled. I'm humbled that uh, he gave me an opportunity to choose life. And I had an opportunity, obviously, I had two options. I could choose life or death. I could have saved my life, lose my life. Yeah. And um, so um, one of the things that we've been doing, we started last week, you know, kind of uh, based off, I guess, my anniversary, my well, three, two weeks ago, two weeks ago yeah. of what what was it? So Pastor Dow was talking about knowing that word. If you don't know the word, you cannot see. That word literally is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto my path. You guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And I can honestly say that when I went, when my, when my time, uh, when that evil day came for me, when I had to choose, man, it was hard. Because when you're in Christianity, Christianity, uh, you're literally building your faith on sandy ground. You're building your family on sandy ground. They make it seem like if you do good, good things will happen. You know what I'm saying? Without persecution, you're going to be good health. Uh, everything is good, no problems. You just live the good life. It's all about having fun. It's all about uh, vacationing. It's all about just, you know, just looking good, you know, but not necessarily, ne- never ever being tested. For, you see, when you're being tested in the in the faith, we think it's people in Africa, in the Middle East, where they're dealing with Muslims, cutting their heads off. And we don't even know if that's true, but that's what they talk about. You know, that these are the stuff. And and, and because we are so blessed to be in America, right? Uh, because it's a Christian nation. And in this Christian nation, Christian nation. you know, we, are, we have the freedom to worship the God uh, that we choose. We, we have the freedom to, to assemble peacefully, right? We have the freedom to liberty, right? The pursuit of happiness, all crack and doo doo. All piece of okay, I'll just leave it as that. You know, <laughs> dude, dude, shit. So anyway, um, okay, I guess got shadow banned. And then, and then just drop, but yeah, yeah. But I mean, shit is. I mean, that's a it's a word. I mean, you know. So, so guys, I want to continue to give you guys encouragement. I'm thinking today's date is July 13th. It's literally will be. Almost, what, four days? Four days from the day that my family left. They left on the 10th? Huh? Or 9th? On, on the, it was, then they left on the 19th. 19th. So the first, oh, okay. so let me give you a recap, and you can go to my channel, check it out for you guys that are new on my channel, but, in, and I've and I, and I, I laid it out. You know, you saw me in true color. You probably see me skinny. You see me, my hair barely trying to grow. Um, some people may say still in that situation. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, I, had a, I mean, bro, I mean, just literally transform. You see me literally being transformed to who I am today, right? Well, Not just spiritually, but physically, you see the transformation. And I had a dream, you know, you guys know about that. And that dream set the tone. And Yah asked, I mean, literally heard an audible voice says, do you love me? Hmm. He, he said, you know, he said, no, he said, you, you, you don't love me. He says, you do not love me. And obviously I'm thinking, I do love you because I've been meditating on this stuff because I go to Christian churches and they always, I mean, t- tell me if I'm making this stuff. It's, I mean, literally, I felt like every service was about Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you just because you're you. I mean, he loves you unconditionally. He loves you. He loves you, loves you. He's a good, good father. Who I am, because of who I am, he's a good, good. I mean, I mean am, am I, is this something that you heard? Yeah. Is, it, is this? All my life. Oh, I mean, Jesus loves you, loves you. 
But then I started because I read that word. I was already, I was already at this time had been reading this word, been reading this word. And I'm looking in here, I'm thinking like, okay, I hear what you're saying, but this word, it's, it doesn't love you. It's not conditional. It's, it's not uh, unconditional. It's actually conditional. Yeah. And the real question we should be asking is, does he love us? I mean, do we love him? Because I already knew he loved me. I mean, I'm in Christianity and, you know, you're a good, good father raising my hands and worshiping and all this stuff. Good health, wealth and all this stuff. So obviously he loves me. Now the question is, do we love him? And my day of that evil day, that day was July, July 1st. I mean, well, that was the day I had vision, but July 19, I had to make a choice. And it was a journey. It was one heck of a journey. And here are the words that helped me to stay in that fight. Stay in that fight. So we're going to kick it off. We're going to go straight into it. The title of the show is, uh, what is the title of the show? Sharper Than Any. Sharper Than Any Two-Edged Sword. So you see this book. And now when you look at this, you see a book. You see a book. But when you look inside it, there's words. This is the word of Yah. These are words. And these words, guys, when I tell you, it is sharp. This is not like, like metaphorically. It is so sharp. I mean, it's literally, it will cut through bones. Marrow, it will cut through this. It will divide spirits. I mean, it is sharp. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, there's no sword that can cut sharper than this word. I've seen what this word can do. And I'm going to show you guys, because I know some of you guys are in the middle of your battle. Some of you guys are coming out. Some of you guys are coming into it. And right now, you do, you are, you had a crossroad road, and you're trying to figure out, what do I do? This is bad, because I'm just trying to follow this word. And right now, I may be losing my family. My family is leaving me. Breaking up, people are persecuting me. I'm going through all of these different things. Man, but I, I, I'm doing the right things, but bad things are happening. This can't be. I'm in a Christian nation. My pastor loves the word. They talk about the word. They put it up there on the on the on the PowerPoint. What's going on here? How come no one's answering my question? I just want to know about the Shabbat. Why are people avoiding me? Why are people just running from me? What's going on? So let's go to the. I want to start at First John. I mean uh, John chapter one. Let's establish what the word is. Let's establish. So let's go to John chapter 1. So read, read, Brother Jordan. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yah, and the Word was Yah. The same was in the beginning with Yah. Okay, let's go all the way down to 14. Right. Verse 14. Now read. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. And we know that the word was uh, Jesus, right? I mean, um, yeah, yeah, so Jesus. So he was in the beginning with the word, uh, right? It was with God. It was it was God. And it dwelt, it says, and that word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. So we literally had the word walk amongst us. Walk to show us how to live this Live out the word of Yah, how to, how to love Yah and how to love your neighbor. We literally had the word manifest itself in the flesh, in the sinful flesh to show that, that what? That the Holy Spirit can overcome, that he can overcome the sinful flesh. And now that same spirit is in us now. You guys see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now go to Hebrews. I want to show you how that this word is true. I'm not making this up. This is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. All right, read. For the word of Yah is quick. The it's quick. Okay. Whew. And powerful. And powerful. This is true, guys. These are all true. Go. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Sharper than any two. I'm, guys, I'm going to show you concretely how the word is truly powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Keep reading. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Man, this is, man, that is sharp. Keep going. And of the joints 
and moral. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, that word will literally tell you who you really are. If you struggle with the word, you know. This right here will tell you if you, I mean, where you, where your heart is, where your soul is, where you, where your true spirit is. Because when you read this word and you start manifesting and you you start to know, are you willing to are you willing to walk according to the spirit? Are you going to walk according to the flesh? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you going to walk according to the things of this world? Or are you going to follow Yah with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul? This word, man, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot escape. The word does not lie. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to find you out. Is that true? Do you guys every agree time, with yeah. that? Every time. It's going to find you every out. Time, gonna find you out. Huh? Your sin will find you out. So guys, so you got, so now the, the, you have to understand. So, July 1st, maybe leading up to it, I had a speaking engagement. I was hoping to show you a video. I may show you the video when I get it, but I had a speaking engagement. It was Father's Day. Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the pagan, you know, uh, holiday called the Father's Day, which means it ain't, it ain't crap. Me, I think I can pull it up. Okay, I, I don't know if I have that. So, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But that day, I made a boast to the people I was speaking to that day. And I was telling them, that I, I had all my sons come up and my daughter. I had, you know, si seven, I think it was uh, six sons and one daughter. I had them all come up. And I said that if I had to choose between them and God, Jesus, I said I would choose Jesus every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I'm just telling you what I said there, okay? I don't agree. You know about <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about the Shabbat like I know today. But that's what I said. I'm just trying to stay true to where I was at that time. Mm. And I even I said you can ask my you can ask my uh, my sons and daughters and stuff. And then I think I even had my dog in there to try to test about obedience and stuff. But anyway, oh, really? I, yeah. But anyway, it was at that church. Gracie? Uh, hmm? Yeah, Gracie. Gracie. Yeah, I had Gracie in there. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> but I was telling them I was telling them the importance as fathers that we need to lead and stuff like that. So anyway, but I made that boast, and shortly after that, that's when I had my dream and my vision. And didn't even know that it kind of reminded me what you, when I read in the book of Jasher when um, when Isaac it was, it was I know Ishmael uh, I, uh, uh, um, Abraham Isaac Isaac when Isaac made a brag that he he would do anything for God and guess what it came true or uh, you know in so you got, in the book of Enoch in the, in the book of Enoch yeah it was it was the book of Enoch or the book of Jasher no sorry Jasher it was Jasher in the book of Jasher. And so it, it kind of was like that you, so you got to be aware for what you say now now uh, you know it happened it's good. Because I'm a better man today. I'm still alive. And, and I'm better for it. But I made that boast. And all of a sudden, he says, okay, we're going to see if you truly would choose me over your sons and daughter. Whoo! Like, man. Now, did you guys think that I didn't love my son? I didn't love my daughter? I didn't love my family? Man, I, I, mean, I was a family man. I was known for being a family man. I was known for being a good father. I was known for being a good husband. Literally. You would think that with my reputation, there's no way anybody would think I've done anything wrong. Right. And like, I'm talking about like, guys, look at it. Like, look, 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 look. Like that. I'm talking about that quick. People turned on me. You know why? You know why? The word. The, look, look, if you want to know who your real friends are, follow this word. This will, you know how they always say that, the, that, that you know, you start cutting off the fat. So you you have all these people attaching to you because they for different reasons. Like, oh, that's KGB. I want to say I'm related. You know, I'm friends with KGB, and you got all these people attaching themselves to you. Some people just for money, for 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 fame, for for whatever the case is. And then guess what? When that word came, all of a sudden, all the fake friends, all the fake brothers and sisters and pastors, all start just getting. <laughs> And it, I became lean. Even the fake wife and the fake sons and the fake daughters all just got cut. And then it was, I'm telling you, literally, it was, very, it was very few people standing. And the only people that I could attract, are you guys hearing this? The yeah. only people that I was able to attract were the children of Yah. Come on. I could not attract a Christian, I couldn't track a heathen, mm -hmm. sure couldn't attract any gay people or trans transformers, 
couldn't attract any of those people. I, re- I mean, I, I mean, it was like, oh, why? Because I was walking, trusting, walking, look, lean not on my own understanding, but trusting in God in everything. And guys, I'm telling you, I know I'm talking right now. It was hard, hard. That's why you have to, just like when I used to play football for the Green Bay Packers or anytime I play football, you don't just go out there butt naked. No. You put on your helmet. You put your shoulder pads on. You know, you put all your pants. You put your gear on. You make sure you tape your you tape your, your wrist. I mean, you spat up because you're about to go into war. I mean, man, you need to make sure you have everything tight and you put some Vaseline for me. I had to put Vaseline because you know the old line wanted to grab me, so I wanted to make sure I was slick, so I can be able to get in and do what I need to do. But guess what? This spit. See, see, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against power and principalities. And so you got to be prepared for that day, because you don't know when that day is coming. And literally, I mean, I'm telling you, it was a good time. Yeah, I just finished. I just finished the CFP. I just got my CFP. Man, I'm like, man, I finally get to spend time with my wife, my sons and daughters. Man, I, I mean, I get. I mean, man, I mean, I just accomplished a great feat, and now I get to enjoy my family. And then I, that's when starts things start getting worse. And, and I and, and I'm like, man, you gotta be ready in season and what out of season. Out of season. Exactly. Go to Ephesians. I hope you, I hope this is encouraging you guys. You guys got to know the word is real. The word is real. Read verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh. Be strong in Yahweh. Go. And in the power of his might. Okay. Put on the whole armor of Yah that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Man, the devil is trying to take you out. Do you guys hear me? See, Pastor Dow talked about something this week, this this last Shabbat, and he says that there's a book in heaven. We have a book in heaven, and Satan knows the story, and he's trying to put stumbling blocks, trying to do everything in his power to make us not fulfill the book, our book. He wants us to be out there, be down there with him in hell. He doesn't want us to make it. So you got to know we have a a formidable foe. Yep. And he studied the playbook. He watches film. Damn it, he has a book. He knows what's in that book. And he's sitting there, he's sitting there going before the throne of the throne of Yah and accusing us, accusing the brethren. Said the only reason why Kabir loves you is because you 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 made him famous. You you gave him riches and you gave him honor. You gave him a beautiful family. You gave him children. Of course he's not he's gonna love you. Of course he's gonna brag up. I bet you take that away from him. I bet you Kabir will curse you in your face. Don't this sound like a familiar story? Don't this sound like Job? Guys, this is, I mean, this is not, this is not for me. This is for all of us. Yep. When we because that many are called, but few are chosen. Hallelujah. I mean, look at this. You got Deshaun Jackson. You got this guy from Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, he's coming into, and guess what? Look what happened. He had his moment. Yeah. And then he felt the few, few prickers. You know, he didn't have his helmet on. He sure didn't have his breastplate. He didn't have his, he didn't have his gear on. And what do you do? He start backpedaling. Start yeah. backpedaling. Start back and say, okay, I'm sorry. What I said was wrong. Please forgive me. Exactly, yeah. Because that, now, you see, look at that word. That word, you see? So mm-hmm. now, we now we, we now know where his heart is at. That money. That's his love. He loves that. He loves his job. Mm-hmm. You see, we talk. When we play football, you got to love this game. You, you can't be out here if you don't love this game. It's all about the game. Mm-hmm. So 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 Deshaun the, the Jackson showed that he loved this game. He was called. And now, look, he backpedaling. Trying to appease the world instead of appeasing his maker. That's right. You guys hear what I'm saying? Yep. See, now I'm bold now. See, I don't have to worry about appeasing the world because now I'm walking this truth. Because the only people that I care about are the children of Yah. Mm. They're the one. That's why you can see Sports Illustrated and all the news speak all these bad evil of me. Guess what? It's not changing the people that are with me now because we're in this truth together. Right. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah, but if yeah. I was in the world, that would have been a, a, a huge amount. People would say, oh, Distance Kabir, Nike dropped him, or Reebok, or, uh, you know, whatever, Apple, whoever is doing stuff, they're just dro- dropping you. 
Hey, we, we got to distance ourselves, man. You, you, you're a bad guy now. We got to All the endorsements are dropping now. See, Licky, you know who my endorsement is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my endorsement. And the children of yeah, see, straightway. See, they didn't drop me. See, now I'll tell you how they'll drop me. Let me let me start walking according to the world. Let me turn back. Oh, yeah. oh then I'll be dropped. See, I can't I can't serve two masters. You can't. You have to either love one or hate the other. That's right. Can't be lukewarm. Either you're hot or cold. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yes, brother. So I this is where I want to be. This is where I belong. I belong in the kingdom of Yah. I'm honored that I can be a part of this kingdom. A part of the children of Yah. Go to 1 John. I want to show you this. Go to 1 John chapter 5. This is go to 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to digress here. I just want to show you guys. It's about the, I mean, man, listen to this. 1 John. Verse 1? Verse, uh, yeah, verse 1. Verse 5? Yep. No. Or just... Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Oh, chapter 5. <laughs> Can you guys see it? We found a way to make this thing bigger for you guys. Read. Whosoever oh, believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of Yah, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children you of see, Yah. See, by this we know we love the children of You see, I love the children of Yah. Mm. You see that? I love the children. Keep reading. How do you know that you know that you love the children of Yah? When we love Yah and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the love of Yah, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. See, his commandments are not grievous. Mm -hmm. This is not grievous at all. I love Yah. And it's about keeping that commandment. It's about loving Yah, loving your neighbor. Because all these, all the commandments are instructions on how to love Yah and love your neighbor. Right. Keep reading verse four to five. Verse four. Yep. For whatsoever is born of Yah overcometh the world. Mm, you hear that? Overcometh the world. Go. And this is the victory. Victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Mm. But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of Yah. See, we are overcomers. See, if you believe that Jesus is the son of Yah, see, see, in Christianity, they will have you believe that you just confess. Mm. See, they think, see, they trick you in thinking like all you have to do is confess that Jesus Christ is, is God, right? You have to believe that. That's it. But that's guess, say, yeah. th that's it. But really, how do you know if that confession is true? Because you got people who can say that I love Yah or I know him, but they, but they don't keep his commandments. So what does that make them? A what? Unbeliever. Yeah. It makes it, it makes it makes them it makes them a liar. Yeah. And the truth is not in right. them. Go to first John. Just go I'm gonna show you right. And we're gonna go back to Ephesians. What do you wanna say? I was gonna say when you look behind the word believe, it means support. Yeah, it means to support. Believe means to support. So they don't support. Go go to first John chapter two, verse three. I mean, it's right here in the New Testament, Christian. I mean, just right here. Can you guys see this? It says, and hereby, we do know that we know him. If, How do we know that we know him? If, Read. If we keep his commandments. Guys, it's an if. How do we, like, like see, I, when I was in Christianity, I always wondered, like, man, man I love you. Like, but how do I know? I never had that assurance mm. until I came into this truth. Now I know. Now I know. No, that I know him. Yeah, See, before I was wondering because the way, the way Christianity set it up, you don't know. You really don't know. You know he loves you, but you don't know if you love him or you That's even right. know him. I mean, how do you know? I remember one time, you know, you do this uh, thing where you tell people to say the sinner's prayer. Yeah. And they say, well, how do I know? And, I, and I, the verse says, well, you know, um, you, you know, just believe. And I said, I said, time. I started getting to what time would tell. But I, I, I was getting there. I'm like, I guess we'll find out. Only time. But no one knew. Now I know. How do I know? Read. He, he saith, or. No, you're right. He Hereby, said, how do you know that you know him? If we keep his commandments. commandments. Now listen to this. Now this is Christianity. Christianity just says, I know him. Oh, I, I love Jesus. I know Jesus. Oh, yeah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I mean, they would say Jesus, Jesus all day long. They would dance, sing songs. I mean, they would do all types of stuff for Jesus, right? Many will come in my name and say that I am the Christ, right? Yeah. Many will come. And what he says, he says that what? Verse 4. He saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. In him. You see that right there? So that's how, it's so simple, guys. There are two types of people, those who know him and those who don't. Mm -hmm. 
Those who know him and those who are liars and the truth is not in them. Go back to Hebrews. Let's go back to the to the bus. So we got to put on that armor. Where do we leave off at? We already uh, four twelve. Huh? Four twelve. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, um, go back to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Sorry, Ephesians six. So we gonna go back. Sorry, guys. I digress. I just want. I mean, guys. I'm gonna tell this word. So put on the full armor of God. Right. Keep reading. Verse eleven. Start at eleven. Put on the whole armor of Yah that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, mm. against powers, against the rulers Rude. of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Man, you guys here to see, look, this, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We don't fight against our, our, our spouse. We don't fight against our sons and daughters. We don't fight against our friends. We don't fight against our brother. Man, this is a spiritual deal. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Definitely. See, you, you, we think that when we were born, we come into this natural family and we think this is our family. And we don't even realize that we've already been chosen from, from the foundation of this. Before the foundation, we were already chosen. Yeah. And he just literally just spread us all over the world. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. It doesn't matter male or female. At the end of the day, he knows who are his. And the people that you're around are going to be the very people that's going to like, like shape you and mold you into who you need to be to make it. And they're going to test you and burn you. You got to go through the fire because that's where the test really comes in. You really, now you really say, man, are you going to love Yah or are you going to love your family? You guys hear what I'm saying? Come on. So keep reading. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yah. The whole armor of Yah, okay. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Shoot, my evil day was three years ago. And I still have maybe loom, but that, 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 nothing hasn't beaten that yet. But that was an evil day. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it. He said, put, make sure you put on the four. Th 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 thank God I had this. And most importantly, thank God for him. Mm. Thank God that he was gracious because guess what? He didn't leave me hanging. I'm like, man, yeah, man, I was crying like, man, yeah, I need help. Thank God that he sent Pastor Dow to, to be able to, to coach me up and encourage me and tell me what I need to even his stand, son. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, that was tough, guys. guys I'm telling you, it was tough. I'm, I'm talking about tough, tough. It made a grown man cry. Wanted to take my life away. I had thoughts of taking my life away and putting it. That's how painful it was. It was like having everything you ever worked for. Everything you ever worked for being ripped out of you. And the only way you can get it back is you had to curse Yah. That's the only way. You had to dishonor Jesus. But it did. It wasn't blatant like that. It came like this. How much you want your family? How? How? What are what you, you willing? What do? are you willing to do to get your family back? I'm telling you, everyone I talked to said that that was in a Christianity or knew anything about me. All asked the same question as if they all came in in a meeting and said, "Okay, guys, um, have you ever seen the movie? Um, what's that movie with uh, Jim Carrey?" Truman Show. Truman Show. It would be like everybody had, it's like the director came and said, okay, guys, Kabir is going to be looking, you know, for help. And when he comes, I need you to ask him, what are you willing to do to get your family back? I'm talking, I didn't give it, it didn't matter. Listen, people, <laughs> it didn't matter. They're in California, New York, even Africa. They all asked the same question. So what does that tell me? I don't think they all set up in a room and freaking met. You know what same it was? Spirit. That spirit. Same that same spirit would just tra boom, just going into different. It was like it was like the Matrix. Yeah. It was like the you know what's that guy? That guy named <laughs> Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. I mean, you you can have a bum in the street. He just sitting here drinking wine, and all of a sudden, whoop, he just transformed and became. He's right there, like dang. You think you ran away here, and then he comes here. It could be a, a woman, an old woman walking across the street. And then boom, she transformed. Mr. Anderson, what are you willing to do to get your family back? Guys, I'm telling you, I was, I was in the freaking matrix. <laughs> Guys, I'm not, I know, I know, I know. I get it. I get it. Guys, if they, I, I'm telling you, man, that is what it felt like. People, I'm, and this is how they would do it. They didn't talk to me normally. It was like this. It's like they turned their head and said, 
what are you willing to do to get your family back? I'm like, what the hell? What, what if? Now, I didn't know what I was looking at. But it was a spirit. Wickedness in dark places and high places. Mm-hmm. See, we don't fight against flesh and blood. And the people that you love and the people that you respect are the ones that, man, I'm telling you, it was gut It Guys, it got so bad. It got so bad for me. I didn't even want to talk to people who were my mentors. I didn't want to talk to anybody that I looked up to because I it's like it's like I knew that they wouldn't understand and I didn't want to believe that that no, not them. No! Do you guys hear what I'm saying? That's how bad it got. I didn't want to talk to Gil Burr. I didn't want to talk to some of my good friends. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let me just talk to some some people that I know that maybe if I can see if I can win them or then I can probably go to the big dog. I did not want to talk to them because it's like deep down I knew because of when I started to understand how the word worked, I knew that they really weren't in the word. And they said, come here, man, I taught you everything you know. What are you going to tell me about the word? I'm Gil Bird. I'm Bryce Pop. I'm Mark Gunger. I'm Vody Bacham. What are you going to tell me? I'm Aaron Campman. I'm your wife. What are you? I'm Ron Young, Mike LeMay. What are you going to tell me, black boy? What? That's how it was. Like what? Howard Dayton from Crown Financial Ministry. Jim Daly from Focus Family. What am I going to tell them? I didn't want to hear it. I just, let me, let me not talk to them. Let me, let me, I mean, John Bevere. John Bevere. I know you guys don't know these names, but look it up. Rewind and go look up all these people. These are some famous people. Didn't want to hear it because I, I, because I knew deep down they were going to reject me once they knew. And then all of a sudden I started walking in the same footstep as Jesus Christ. Now I say, wow. Man, it's just, it just, it just humbling to say, this is what Jesus experienced. Peter. All his disciples scattered and ran and left him hanging. Aren't you with Jesus? I don't know Jesus. I, I, what are you talking about? Denied him three times. I had people deny me. I'm talking about my agent, Bruce Toner. I mean, this is a guy that's always been there for me. I did not want... I, Brothers. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. I tell you, man. It, it, it was Serious. Serious. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm trying to be. So I get it. So you guys are probably. Uh, see, these are names that mean something to me. may mean nothing to you. But these were names. These were people that I consider confidant. Friends. People that have been with me. Have known me when I was a little boy in high school. And been there supporting me for my career. Everything. Came to my. I had a big event here for my Hall of Fame. All these people I didn't even want to talk to. Because I knew that somehow. I mean, like, man, they're they, they going to think I'm crazy. Eventually, I did have to talk to them. Eventually. Go back to your <coughs> word. Keep reading. Where are we? Uh, if, uh, I hope you stay on that spot. I know I've been. Okay. Ephesians. Okay, read, guys. So when that, I'm telling you, man, you don't know. When it says withstand in that evil day, we, you, if you come into this truth, you will experience that evil day. And that, and guys, that's not just, it's not just, okay, now I have that evil, that's it for me. No, it's going to be one, it's going to be another one. We're just in the beginning of tribulations. We're just in the beginning. Keep reading. And having done all to stand. That's what pastor told me to do. See, I didn't even know what he was in. See, pastor knew I was in my evil day. Mm-hmm. Pastor, I said, pastor. I'm like, I'm like, he, I didn't even know pastor. I said, pastor, what do I do? What do I need? He says, son, he says, you go into your room. You close the door, you lock it, and you cry. You cry real good. And then when you come out, you, you, you get your shoulder back, you get your chin up, and you stand. I say, is there anything else I need? Just stand. Just stand. Isn't that what it says? Have it done all to what? Stand. stand. Keep reading. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod. See, look at this, guys. Having your loins girt with truth. Then the word he he come in what full of truth and what grace yeah. right there full I mean you want that you want to be filled with the truth having the breastplate of righteousness his righteous laws on your heart keep reading 
and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of, of peace. peace. Mm. Keep reading. Above all, taking the shield of faith, mm. wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Mm. And take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation. Man, you better, you better not go into that football game without a helmet. Mm. Or you get CTE for real. Shoot. You better have that helmet of salvation. Now go. And the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. Shoom, shoom. This is not a lightsaber. This is the word. This is the word. Go. Which is what? Which is the word of Yah. Mm. Keep reading. Which is the word of Yah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly. Open my mouth boldly. You hear that? Boldly. Bold as a lion. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. To make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. As I ought to speak. And that's what I, when you start walking this truth out, you start speaking this word, you, you're going to naturally be bold. And people will fear. It says the wicked flee with no one pursue. But the righteous is what? Bold as a lion. Bold as a lion. That's in the word. See, I, I, man, when I look at my life, I'm like, man, I'm just walking the word. I'm like, literally, do just when you do what the word says, you can't. You're gonna, you're gonna manifest what the word says. You're gonna manifest. You guys hear what I'm saying? All right. So, guys, now I want to show you something. See, this is what Christians don't totally tell you. See, they don't really prepare you for this. But if you trust this word, if you really read, don't go off of what your pastors say. See, we have a pastor that give us understanding. Knowledge and understanding, right? And he tells you to check his work. See, in Christianity, they don't te teach you to check the work. They don't teach you to read the word. They just teach you to just read the telephone. They even tell you, don't even bring your Bible. And if they do pretend to word, look at the word, they don't really want you to look at the word because they know that most people don't read the word. But if you read this word and you walk out, not just read it, not just be a hearer of the word, but you be a what? A doer. doer. A doer of this word. Then you will be prepared for that evil day. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So let me show you that this word is so sharp. It's sharper than any two. I'm talking about any, any. No sword can do what the word can do. Remember I talked about cutting off the meat? See, a lot of people would think, tell you that Jesus came here to bring peace. I, I've done surveys. Did you know I've done surveys? I'll walk around and say, hey, did Jesus, what did Jesus, did he come to bring peace or division? And I'm you think like man, you think that people will know it that they're the word. I'm to my Christians, pastors. They all, they all, they all say, Jesus come here to bring peace. Peace, 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 peace. Am I making this thing up, guys? I mean, I done my survey. This is my own personal survey. Maybe you maybe you had one pastor that kind of knew what the word said, and you know, but you know. But they, they say Jesus comes to bring peace. Peace on the earth so that everybody love everybody. You know, just love, 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 love. And and you can be gay. Come as you are. Come as you are. If you're a trans, you know, just come, gay. Come on. It doesn't matter. You're racist. Come, 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 come. Or you just have our, our white church. We're going to have our black church. We're going to just, our Mexican, whatever. Just, just come. Don't change. Don't, you don't need to change. Be you. Because he loves you just because you're you. You guys hear what I'm saying? Does that sound like Christianity or am I making this thing up? I mean, come on, David. I mean, you've been in Christianity. Enough of it, do. Guys, am I making this thing up? No. All they talk about is somebody talk about John 3, 16. One of them is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if they go past John 3, 16, they'll see what he really talks about. He says, I didn't come to condemn the world. But guess what? You'll find out who's condemned. Those who run from the light, that's condemned. And those who walk, see, see, I will, see my, my ex-wife, you know what she did? She ran. She didn't want to come into the light because she knows that her evil deeds will be exposed. See, I was willing to come into the light. I was willing to come into YouTube and show everybody, say, hey, tell me what I've done wrong. Show me. Do you know after three years, three years, not one single Christian, not one single person that supported my ex-wife can tell me the wrong that I've done. They can, and they, they, they'll, they'll say stuff. They'll imply, but they can't back up that wrong with the word. They can't. They get distracted with all this stuff. Just show me my wrong so I can repent. 
Shouldn't you want to? Shouldn't you want to know what you did wrong so you can repent? Mm -hmm. I'm genuinely asking, what have I done wrong so I can repent? Just be a lead repenter. Just act like you did something wrong so then you can help your wife to repent. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? I can't make this up. So now, go to Matthew chapter 10. I want to show you guys something. See, did, now, here's the survey. Could, did Jesus come in to bring peace or division? Let's see what Jesus says, guys. I'm, I, I know. I know. So let, let's, we, should, we should make this be able to clip this thing out. Did Jesus come to bring peace or division? What's your answer? Okay, here's the answer right now. We're going we're gonna to do this now. Read. Think not. See, listen to it. He says, don't even think. Don't eat. He didn't even just say, say, he said, don't even think. Don't even entertain the thought. Don't even think. Do you guys see that? Good. Keep it ready. This is, Je now, just guys, I'm quoting Jesus. This is he. Brother Jordan is quoting Jesus. This is what Jesus said. Jesus, did you come to bring peace or did you come to bring division? I just want to know Jesus. Jesus, speak. I mean, I mean, I mean, Jesus, please may you share it. Sorry. Go. Read. Speak not that I am come to send peace on earth. No. No, Jesus. You didn't bring peace on earth. What did you come to bring then? I came not to send peace. Not peace? Then what did you come to bring? But a sword. But a sword. Do you guys see this? Mm -hmm. He comes to bring a sword. We now know the sword is the word. He's the, he is the sword. He, no, there's his tongue. I mean, he is the sword. I come to bring a sword. Okay, read. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Woo! So this word can bring that type of division where now you're going to bring variance against his father? Okay, let's read. And the daughter against her mother. Against a daughter? Come on, mama. Come on, that's. I mean, mama's, come on, this, they have a bond. This, this is my girl. We go shopping. We go to the mall. We go boom, boom, boom. you telling me that this word can break up that type of relationship? A son with his, okay, keep reading. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. I, I can see that. That's an easy one. I could have done that one, but keep reading. Sorry. A man's <laughs> foes shall be they of his Ooh, own household. A man's foe. Listen to this, men. Men, listen to this. This is the man's house. Your own foes shall be of his own household. Not somebody else's house. Your own enemy. I was sleeping with this woman for 16 years. Dwell with this woman for 16 years. Loved her. Provided food. Shelter. Counter. Nobody can ever say that I did not provide for her. I went to her daddy. And I gave him my word that I would take care of his daughter all the days of my life. Do you understand? This was not like, oh, hey, no, I went to the father and said, can I have your daughter hand in marriage? I said, I promise you. You hear what I'm saying? I gave him a promise that I would take care of her all the days of her life. That's what I told him. See, I'm an honorable man. And I was committed to that. Never abused her. Never, ever abused her. She abused me. Was patient with her. And guess what? She was my enemy. She was my foe. But you didn't know it. You're just going about life and you're just living life trying to be the best Christian and follow the word and do this stuff. And, and, and here's the crazy part. I don't know if you guys know the story. Guess I was a Muslim before. Do you know who kind of helped me and pointed me to Jesus? She did. Well, would you ever think that the person who invited you to church would be the very person that goes against the word? I even chose her over another woman because this woman was just, I mean, she was into me and everything, but this one was into Jesus. That, that's, what, that's what I perceived. I perceived, man, she was about Jesus. I wasn't even necessarily attracted to her. I, so I had a, I'm just being real. I had a black sister who was into me. And then I had this one who was a Filipino. But she was just, you know, she didn't really talk about faith because she knew I was a Muslim and I guess she was a Christian but didn't want to offend me or whatever. And so, and this one, she was a Christian, and, and you knew that, but even though she was struggling with them, but you can see all this stuff, and I'm thinking like, and so I ended up picking her, not because I was, I was actually kind of embarrassed being with her, because you know, everybody will say, when you make it to the league, they always end up getting with some white sister, or somebody, they never get with a sister, like, you know, I mean, it, this is the pressure, so I'm all like embarrassed, you know, like, I can hang out in her neighborhood, but when she came out, I'm like, trying to keep my distance, you know, like, oh, yeah, see, there go another brother, make it to the league, and he gets with some other girl. You know what I'm saying? I say you know what I'm talking about, right? 
And I picked her because of her relation, because of what my perceived uh, perception of her relation with Jesus. I said, I want what she has. But she was one hell of an actress. One hell of an actress. When you're a narc, they know how to literally like act. But it doesn't last long. But by the time I end up signing the dot, getting married, getting the marriage license, booty beat, you start you start seeing the people real colored. But we're in now, for better or worse, for richer or poor, and sickness and health. Divorce is not an option. We both said that. We even went to pre-marriage counseling. So this is not a guy that did, you, you know what pre-marriage counseling is, right? Mm -hmm. We went through pre-marriage counseling. We went through the whole thing about, I mean, we like we were actually prepared, like, okay, the man, this is the man's role, the woman's role, and how we're gonna do that. We talked about all those things. Family dynamics and boom. I mean, you think like, man, we've done it. We're checking all the box. You don't think, man, the only thing, I said, Jesus is going to be the glue of our relationship. We're not going anywhere. People even told me, did you know I had teammates literally telling me to get a prenup? They told me to get a prenup. That's what they told me. You know what I told them? I don't need a prenup because divorce is not an option. Now I know better, but I said, I'm not getting a prenup. And, but you know something? I was wise enough to say this. If anybody is married me for just my money and want to be evil, may it be a curse on them. I knew better to say that. We'll see. You guys hear what I'm saying? So that's why I, I literally was being faithful to, to my covenant, to my, to my promise. The promise I made to her dad, the promise I made to Yah, to, Yah, to God, and to, to her. Was she faithful? She was going to actually, we actually talked about obedience, submission. Did not happen at all. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? So let's keep reading. So your enemy will be of your own foe, of your own household. Read. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy. Do you guys hear this? See, look at what they say. What are you willing to get your family back? What are you willing to do? Man, Jesus would never ask you to choose between your wife and him. Jesus would never ask you to choose between you, you and your children. You got to do it for the children. Come on. Just do it for the children. You got, they, they're innocent. You got to do it for the children. Come on. Jesus would never. That would be. No, nah, he wouldn't do that. He look, he's about focus on the family. Focus on the family. Does that sound right? It sounds good, huh? Sounds real good. It should be focus on him. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Yah. Am I right? Focus on your master. Right? Keep reading. And he that loveth son or daughter go more back, than go, me mm -hmm. is not worthy of me. See, look at Go back. Go back. To, where are you? Okay. So he says, so he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not what? Worthy. So he's saying you cannot put your son, your daughter, your father, your mother, even your, I think that foe is just talking about the woman straight up. <laughs> the woman before me. I can show you scriptures, and when we're done with this, I want you to find scripture that says, you know, to be my daughter, you have to hate your mother, your father. Your, I want to make sure we show that. But keep reading. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receive it okay. that sent me. Okay, so look what it says in verse 3. He says, he that findeth his life shall what? Lose. Lose. See, I didn't even know this, guys. I was just walking it. They said, Kabir, what are you willing to do to save your life? See, look, he says, he that find his life. Look, I was searching around all of Wisconsin, going to Washington Islands, all the way down to Milwaukee, Peoria, uh, 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 Wisconsin. I'm, I'm going all over the place looking for my family. And then I get people ask me, what are you willing to do? And he says, he that findeth his life shall what? Lose it. And he that lose his life. See, I lost the life of the Packer, KGB. I lost the life of being a husband of eight, eight children. I lost the, the reputation of being maybe governor of Wisconsin. I lost all that just to do what? Just to do what? To find it. See, I got my life now. I really got my life. But what did I do it? For his sake, for my sake. Yeah. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Do you find another scripture? Yes. Where is it? It's Luke chapter 14, verse 26. 
Okay, hold on, guys. We're going to get there. I hope you guys see me. This is real. I mean, I was literally experiencing all this stuff. Go to Luke 4. Read. If this, any, <coughs> go before that. <coughs> go to right before that. Uh, okay, listen to this. Look at And look, he says, And there went a great multitude with him. And he turned and said unto him, Go before that. I just want to see what they were saying. So, okay, this is the cost. He says, Okay, go up. Okay, go, so, go back up. I, I, just right. want to, I just want to see just where we were before. There was a great multitude. All right. So this is the cost of you. Okay, read verse 26. Read, Jordan. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother. So when it says hate, it's not talking about like I hate you. It's talking about like your love for your, your heavenly father should be greater than your love for your, your earthly father. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, should, it just means that you love less. So that if I had to choose between, if I had to choose between a, what they say, a hard plate, you know, between a hard plate and a, what they call it, a stone, a rock and a hard place or whatever. But if I had to choose, if, you know, if all else fail, I'm, I'm going to go, this, this, this is how I'm moving. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, if any man, if any man, he said any woman, he says, if any man, go. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother. Father and mother, mm-hmm. And wife. And wife. You see that? You guys see that? Does it say wife in there? No. Not Jesus. Jesus wouldn't expect you to hate your wife. Read. And children. And children. Okay. And brethren. Uh. And sisters. Yea, and his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. You know what you don't see in there? Just the thing I think is so cool. You know what you don't see? You don't say, and if any woman hates her husband. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't put the other. See, that's what he doesn't tell. But Christianity will make you think that he doesn't want you to hate your wife. See, a woman, he would never ask a woman to choose between him and her husband. Because the woman was created for the man. You see what I'm saying? And the man was created for Jesus. You see that? Can you guys see that? Because yep. if you go to First Peter, it says, he says, you win your husband. Don't you just honor, you subject yourself to it. Now, if if Yah, if he's not doing right, Yah will take him out and give you a better man. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. See, a woman thinks that, well, he ain't following Jesus. I don't need to listen to him anymore. Show me, show me where you can back that biblically that you don't have to listen to your man. They said, well, it's not fair because the Bible was written by men. Yeah, it was written by God, men of Yah. You guys hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is because says, any man, he says, you cannot be my disciple. And he goes on and tell you the cost. One more, just I want to show you one more. Go to 1 Peter. Actually, yeah, go to 1 Peter chapter 3. I just wanted to show you so you guys know. I want to keep this in context. Because the woman said, well, how come, well, how about the man's not following Jesus? He's not obeying. Can I just leave him? Can I, can I, can I choose Jesus? Because they always say, well, I'm following Jesus. How can a woman follow Jesus and dishonor her husband? Is that possible? No. Let's read. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. All right. Likewise, you wives... Be in subjection to your own husband. Look at it, commanding you, be in subjection to your own husband. But how about my husband ain't following Yah? How about, how about he's not being obedient or he's not following Jesus? I just want to follow Jesus. I don't need to follow my husband. I'm just going to go straight to Jesus. I'm just going to go around my husband and I'm going go straight to Jesus because I know Jesus loves me. He just loves me because I'm me. Let's see. Let's go. That if any obey not the word. Whoa! They said that if any does not obey the word, what? They also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wise. You know what they were telling me back then? They said, come here, go win your wife back. Go woo her. Go win her back. Who's supposed to be doing the winning? The woman. And is she supposed to win me with her words? Is she supposed to win me by leaving me? No, she's supposed to win me by what? Her conversation, her lifestyle. Why they what? Behold your what? Chase. Conversation. Couple with? Fear. You see that? And I saw a plate, uh, a platinum of hair today. I saw that today. I was going to tell you what the, what the video sent me, Brother Freddie. I said, that's what, because I heard they actually use the word, oh, that's platinum of the hair. Anyway, guys, I, I, I digress. But anyway, but it goes on. And look at this. It says, go to verse five. What it says, for after this matter, what? Or after this manner in the old time. See, we we seek in the old path, right? This women, listen, women, listen. You want to know what the women of old did? The holy, not just any women. I'm talking about the holy women of Yah. Read. The holy women also who trusted in Yah adorned themselves 
being in subjection unto their own husband. Didn't Sarah do that when she said, hey, do you tell the Pharaoh that, tell him that you're my sister? Didn't Isaac do the same thing with Rebecca? This is what the holy women, well, that's not, hey, hey do what I say. They didn't even have that. They did what they said. They, this is what the holy women of Yah did back in the days. See, we're seeking the old past. Not this new uh, Beyonce. Whose world it is? Girls. No, 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 no. These women, the holy women of Yah. What? But do you know that my ex-wife would be considered a holy woman of Yah? And, uh, God, let me say God, of their God, of their God in Christianity. She's an inspiration. The Queen Vashti is the inspiration of today now. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Guys, I'm not making this thing up. Read. What does it, it say about Sarah? Oh, they bring up somebody from the old times. What about, what about Sarah? Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him master, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. They say, but Kabir, she was afraid. She was afraid that you're trying to keep the Shabbat. She was afraid that you were joining a cult. She was afraid that you had CTE. She was afraid. She was afraid. She was afraid, 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 afraid fear, 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 fear. But does God give us a spirit of fear? No. You see, I can go back to the word. He doesn't give you a fear, a spirit of fear. So right there, she wasn't walking according to the spirit, but according to the flesh. She was, she was motivated by Satan, Mr. Anderson. You hear me? So anyway, guys, are we done reading? So guys, I just want to, guys, this is all I wanted to do. You can take, you can take the scripture down. So, and we were finished reading, right? So guys, this is what it takes. You got to put on the full armor of Yah. You got to understand that this word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will divide relationships, strong ties, soul ties. People that you want to have a relationship, I get it. People love their mama. People love their daddy. People love, I mean, I get it. But men, you got to ask the question. You have to ask yourself the question. Are you going to pick Jesus? Or are you going to pick those that you supposedly love? You can't have, you can't do both. The only way, you know why I have a relationship with my dad? Because because he's, he's, he's actually keeping the commandments. See, I sanctify him because he's living in my home. Does he not keep the Shabbat? Yes. Does he not, uh, uh, he, he, he watches the service, he prays with us and stuff like that? I don't know where he's at, but he's doing it. So but just by his action, he can be saved just by, what, I, what happened? I've been keeping the commandments. My, my son was doing it. He was around these other people who did it. And, and I mean, dad, I mean, I literally could be helping my dad make it to the kingdom. It doesn't say that, that even if the non-believer in 1 Corinthians 7, that even if a non-believer stays, the, 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 the believer sanctified the unbeliever. Maybe that's what that looks like. My dad literally keeps the commandments of Yah. He don't, you think we give him bacon? Well, he can't eat, he, you know, he was a Muslim. Yeah. But he, don't, he eats what we eat. He rests. We shut down, we shut it down. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. How about he finds out and say, hey, uh, uh, Mr. Mustafa, you know, you, you, your son hooked you up, you know, because he was, he was following me. And then because you was under his house, within his gates, you were keeping the commandments. You made by the skin of your teeth, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. So anyway, guys, all I got to tell you at the end of the day, I know it's hard. And if you going into this, into that evil day, if you're in the middle of that evil day, if you're coming out, there's, 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 there's light at the end of the tunnel. I'm experiencing that now. Right now, I mean, I haven't had much to really say because all we're doing is building. We're getting the house ready. We're just doing sh every Shabbat. We're meeting. We're just preparing. We're building. Like I said, team chemistry. We just, we just growing. Things are happening. I mean, literally, you're seeing rest of the restoration begin. I mean, we are literally in the beginning of restoration. I'm, I'm experiencing restoration now. And I think... Ten years from now, it's gonna to be totally different. We're gonna be full. We're gonna have little babies running all over the place. We're gonna just. We're gonna be. On, we're gonna be on another land, flourishing, growing our own food, living life peacefully, and wait for the king to come back. And no matter when he comes back in that stuff, we're gonna be prepared because we're gonna be there for all his appointed feast. So, guys, man. Stay in that fight. There is light. I know it's hard. When you're in it, I get it. Sometimes you, I mean, I was wondering, I mean, I, I got me a woman, a beautiful woman who loves Yah, who loves me. I have a, 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 a wonderful pastor. 
I have a beautiful assembly, brother, a brotherhood that is better than my times in the NFL. Mm. Better than my, I mean, you understand there was nothing better than that. Even in Christianity, even Christianity couldn't even compete with the relationship you had with the guys that you uh, went on to the, we call the battlefield. And now I can honestly say this is way better. It just, it blows that out. It's pale in comparison. Straight up. They've been with me through thick and thin from me being tasered, from me being thrown in jail, from, I mean, th these people have my back. Watching my family when I'm in my predicament. And we have each other back, right? I mean, when you just get thrown in jail, did, did we just say, oh, let's just leave Jordan in there, man, shoot. Let's bounce, man. We, we got to bounce. Cut, cut our string, you know what I'm saying? You have brother, brother, brother Ryan wouldn't even speak up. You know, we got, I got I had to get secret codes in there, brother. I, I get it, man. I know you just, bro, just, just, just get what you need to get you out. We stayed at, mid, at midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning. 4, yeah. Four o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't leave until we got our brothers out. But in Christianity, they wouldn't even be there. When I was there, no one came and got me. But these brothers did. Brother Freddie holding the house down while we out there just bailing. Bro, man, I, you can't get better than that. Sisters making sure we have food. Do you guys hear? They take care of my dad. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? You can't get better than this. So anyway, I can wrap up. I'm, I'm pretty much, see, I told you. See, look, I, I know it's shocking. I was able to do it somewhat in an hour here. I mean, it's better than <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, I just, hey, I'm just going to continue this series and um, and show you some more verses of what got me through the certain things. So, next week, I'm going to talk about what a lot, what, what, how was I able to allow, to let my, my sons and daughter go. As much as I love them, what was the script, what are some of the scriptures that kept me, that, that, that allowed me to say, let me let them go? Not that, not that I don't love them or anything, but why, how was I able to do that? How was I able to somehow work that in my brain and, and, and with the word? And I tell you, everything I did was based off of this word, everything. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if I didn't have the word, I would have, done every, I would have done everything to get my family back. I would have acquiesced, capitulated. I would have begged the woman, baby, 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 baby please, baby, 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 please, man, I want to come back. Please take me back, baby, 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 baby. What kept me from not saying all the stuff that we were taught in movies and love music, all the love music and uh, all that crap? What kept me from doing that? And all I can point back to is the word of Yah. It was the word that directed my step. With the help of the Holy Spirit guiding me to all truth. And man, I'm telling you, and it was very nice to have somebody here in the, in, in the physical world, like a pastor, Pastor Dow, I mean, I don't know if you ever, if you guys ever get a chance, go look at Pilgrim, Pilgrim Progress. I was Christian in the movie. I'll be Christian, and Pastor Dow has to be uh, Mr. Evangelist. I think it was called The Evangelist or whatever. You know, every time I'll go off the prayer, Pastor said, get back on your road, boy. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I tell you, this is, so guys, if you in that, if you in that, go, look, listen to Pilgrim Progress. If you, as a matter of fact, Pastor Dow is the, I mean, I already knew about it, but I didn't put the tune together. But if you in that, that would be a great encouragement. Listen to Pilgrim Progress by John Bunyan. Go check that out. It will encourage you to stay the course and understand that you're going to have so many people trying to take you off the path of righteousness. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? So check out. Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunny is an old story. You can read it. You can hear the audio. I'll say listen to the audio. It will comfort you. It will really help me out to just kind of just know. And the more I kept on going, more of the burden just fell off. I literally was experiencing everything that that um, in that uh, when who, uh, John Bunny. I mean, what he wrote was I mean, basically based off the word. And Pastor Dow gave that to me, and I listened to it, and it was very encouraging. So I want to encourage you. If you haven't heard Pilgrim Progress, go check it out. They even have an automation. They, I think they made a movie. Check it out. Just You can check any version, but if you can get the the, uh, the abridged version, it's very powerful. But anyway, I'm done. I'm going to the king. I know this is shocking to, this is shocking to Brother David. Brother David, <laughs> just you know, he'd be making fun of me back here say that, you know, I went way longer because I always, always say it's going to be short. And I'm not sure. I'm but not, this time I didn't say it's going to be short. I'm not shocked. You're 20 minutes away from my time. <laughs> 
<laughs> what? <laughs> You're 20 minutes early from my Okay, 20 minutes early from my <laughs> But anyway, uh, thank you, Brother Kabir, for your time. Saints, real quick, uh, as you can see here on the website, if you want any more information on the ministry, uh, you can go on the website, straightwaytruth.com or straightway.com. <coughs> as you can tell here, they have the schedule throughout the week. Remember, seventh day, uh, Saturday, uh, there is a live Shabbat service at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time with Pastor Dow. Uh, make sure you tune in if you want to hear a Shabbat message from the shepherd. Also, if you cannot watch it on the website because it does require a flash player, you can watch it on your phone at youtube.com slash straightway live. That's pretty much, uh, pretty much it, Brother Kabir. Closing words. All right, guys. I hope this was encouraging to you guys. Understand that word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Follow that word. It truly is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. So, guys, just remember, <clears throat> be faithful in the little things.